giggling. I'm going to start giggling. That we, we all giggle and then. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and hello, everybody. What's up? Uh, welcome to uh, We're Not Even Supposed to uh, Podcast. That's today. <laughs> exactly. Uh, my name is Ming Chen. Hi, I'm Blake Northcott. And uh, yes, here you can hear all the uh, the wacky adventures of, uh, I guess, our pop culture fandom and um, and 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 pretty much everything else. <laughs> Just nothing's nothing's on topic, nothing's off limits here. Uh, exactly. If you are watching on Facebook, feel free to comment, ask questions, uh, ask us anything, my friends. So uh, big shout out. Uh, so this is Christopher Hewitt. Christopher Hewitt tunes into every one of our live streams. So oh wow, whether they're about real estate law or um, drone pilots or <laughs> therapy or um, uh, and everything else and pop culture. So um, I got to shout out Chris because Chris overnighted me and Mike uh, a bunch of comic books. Ooh. And um, the postage was something ungodly. It was like 80 bucks or something. But So I hope he was able to eat that week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, That's we amazing. Yeah, we got a bunch of books. But uh, if you've never tuned in before, um, uh, I'm I'm Ming. Uh, you might know me from Comic Book Man or Dan Thumbel Super Smash or uh, Kevin Smith. And uh, Blake is an amazing creator, writer, Canadian friend. Canadian, that's right. <laughs> Sir, uh, convention convention favorite. Oh, I miss conventions so much right now. Yeah, I get that question every week. As do you, I, I imagine is. Oh um, yes. Pretty much. Uh, when do you think? When do you think they're going to be coming back? And um, yeah, I don't know if you've seen. There are, there is still stuff going on. Right, a lot uh, of it online. Yeah, Google. there have been a couple in-person ones, mm -hmm. and whether you feel safe enough to actually go or not, I guess that's up to the person. Um, right. But I saw one. Um, if you've ever been to a convention, you know, you can buy a photo with like your favorite celebrity or TV star, or movie star or creator or cosplayer. Um, it was uh, it was weird, though. They had they had the photo op booth set up. But okay. they had a piece of plexiglass between the, pe the per people. And that's how they took the picture. That defeats the whole purpose of going up to meet your, you know, one of the people you're following, your idol. You don't even get to really have that interaction as much as you want. Yeah, with a piece of plexiglass between you. Yeah, it's like going to the bank, talking. To the <laughs> it's like, um, you know, go, uh, I've been to a couple of fast food restaurants where they have the bulletproof glass. Oh you know, yeah, maybe not so great neighborhoods, but the food was awesome. So, we have that everywhere in Canada right now. Is that plexiglass stuff is up pretty much everywhere, even at Walmart. You know, like any store really, they have that everywhere. So I don't know if that's the same where you guys are, but. It's a standard thing in Canada right now. Yeah, I don't like it. I miss yeah. people. I miss greeting people. I miss shaking hands. I miss high fiving. I miss all of that. Um, yes. Does everybody else? I imagine. Um, exactly. Yeah. Now, what one thing I had to ask you about because you are a fan of pop culture, everything you know, uh, same as me. So this week we had the Mandalorian episode <laughs> two, which had yeah. some controversy attached. So baby Yoda, you know, eating mm -hmm. the fish eggs. Yes. A lot, lot of, a uh, lot of controversy. Oh like, my gosh. So someone from Disney had to come out and explain that these weren't babies and they were unfertilized eggs. And I think, I don't know, a lot of people were really upset about this. What do you think? I saw that now one, we, we, we I, you have children. Yes. I, I have children. Uh, mine are a little bit older, but when my children were, were younger, and as, as anybody who knows who's even been around kids, kids put anything in their mouth. Number one, <laughs> yes, like, literally anything. See, so, yeah, I keep you part. You know, about ninety percent of the job as your parent, as a parent, is keeping stuff out of their mouths. Like, don't die, don't choke on that. <laughs> right, uh, and then number two, like kids will eat anything as well. So, and they're always hungry. They're yeah. always hungry. Now that applies to kids younger or older. They're, they keep eating and they don't stop. So if, if, for any of you out there who don't have kids, I'm warning you right now. Kids, you have kids, they eat and they don't stop and food costs money, a lot of money. And that's um, that's why I'm that's why people like Blake and I are either working all the time or trying to make money at a convention or just <laughs> hustling in general is so we can feed, our, feed the kids. Exactly. Um, yeah. So I... 
I I can't blame the kid for being hungry. You you barely see him being fed. Yeah, that's true. Um, and the food, the the rare times you do see the child eat, it's, e it's either at like at, at a cantina, which, or you know, or some some weird divey space bar, and right, that's hit or miss. Well, I I agree with you. I think it's almost a way for the writers or the show, uh, you know, people to show how the Mandalorian is able to exercise his parenting of the child, because it's not like how are you going to parent, you know. The, the, the baby Yoda, like other right. than and go after, that. <laughs> and go after bounties. Like, could you, like, I can't, you know, I, I've, I've brought my dog to the studio here. Uh, right. My kids have been here, but it's like, could you, I, I don't know if you've ever taken your kids to a, to a convention, but um, I, I know a lot of people do. It's, it's tough though. You got to watch them the whole time. There's a lot oh yeah. Time. Yeah. I can't imagine trying to like track down bounties. No. And, you know, shooting things and, and flame throwing people right. and you know, a, like a kid that I didn't even really sign up for to take yes. care of is running around and getting into trouble and eating things. So, um, I, you know, I don't blame the kid for being hungry. No. I guess we know that baby Yoda's like, um, like caviar, I guess. Yeah. Big giant. <laughs> exactly. I was that too. Yeah. I, but I, I, I yeah, I imagine those are edible. You know, if we, I, I, I've, I've eaten fish eggs. Yeah, not, yeah. I've been to a, we've been to a sushi restaurant. <laughs> right. And um, yeah, I imagine that brand of caviar is pro probably fetches a pretty penny on the, uh, the open market. Right. Well, the other thing was last season they had him eating the frogs. Right. Yes. So it's like frog legs, caviar, kind of things we're used to seeing. You know, some people eat. Not that strange. Yeah, I I like seafood. I don't um I don't know if we've ever yeah I, did we did we we yes we did we ate sushi together. Oh yeah, <laughs> we, we, we ate a lot. Yes, we we went to a place in New Hampshire and we ordered um if you ever been to a sushi restaurant you can order you know, you can have like your California roll or whatever a couple pieces or you can order the boat. Right, everything. The boat is everything. We got the boat. The boat. The boat was awesome. Yeah. Being out with Ming in a restaurant, you're just, <laughs> you're spoiled to the luxury of Ming knows the best everything, everywhere, anywhere we go. I don't know. You just have like this sixth sense about where to go, oh, where the good food is. I mean, after a hard day's work at a, at a major comic book convention, how, uh, how better to spend your time and relax and relive the day than to, you know, first go grab a nice cocktail somewhere, go grab a great dinner. And then maybe go get more cocktails afterwards. And yes. And and uh, you know, as it gets later, and uh, you know, maybe you're feeling a little looser, you know, karaoke or or, or go or dancing or whatever. It's uh, like, cornhole. This Who knows? Is, this is why we do what we do, ladies and gentlemen. This is uh, this is uh, this is why we do what we do. So I mean, and I don't blame an infant creature no. for eating seafood, as it were. Right. And I know he didn't know it was the last of the, her kind. No. And, yeah. It wasn't like malicious. It was yeah. just curious and he's hungry probably. So I thought that was funny. It's like, you know, uh, again, we have kids. It's like leaving, um, it's like leaving a big bag of like freshly cooked McDonald's fries next to a kid and being like, well, the, well, those are, those are the last of their kind. Like, don't eat them. Like, come on. They're going to eat them. <laughs> No, it's yeah, it's not working, and it's not like he ate all of them. He had like what three, four. I mean, I mean, I don't want to, you know, spoiler alert, but I mean, yeah, in, yeah, moved on. It was all right. Moved on. It was all right. Yeah, yeah. There are plenty of eggs in that vessel. That's right. It had to be, I don't know, twenty, thirty or so. <laughs> well, that was just an interesting. I like the uproar about it. I was just kind of interested to hear what you thought or what other people thought. So, if anyone has any comments, let us know. Because that was kind of an interesting side, aside from the uh, the show. Um, yes, uh, Susan uh, Shafkam. All babies should come with that floating stroller that encapsulates, encapsulates the kid. Yes, exactly. I love how anytime there's danger, it just goes whoop, like the little circle thing goes around him, and he's like encased in that little floating. It's perfect. Yeah, I was wondering who invented that technology and how. Yeah. 
Do they make them in adult sizes? <laughs> um, they should. Yeah. You know, Perfect. Get, yeah, the, then then we'd be fine. It's kind of like um it's very Iron Man ish. Yes. Very Iron Man, like uh there's danger, you know, the uh the, the, the lid, the shell head flips down <laughs> and uh <laughs> and er and everything is okay. So um yes, Beth J says I like how you're matching today. I are are we sort are of are we matching? I, I mean, you look good in black. I'm uh, I'm more of a dark blue, but dark blue, yeah, that's oh, all right. Maybe headphones? our our headphones, yes. So we were mentioning before I had white ones last time, but then I switched mine up to black, and now he has the white ones. So I should have kept my white ones, and then we really would have matched. <laughs> yeah, uh, one other, I had to tell you one other thing that I noticed this week, Ming. You're doing yes. so many cool things. It's hard to keep track of all the cool situations you're in. But I noticed that you were uh, on a Twitch stream with Talia Vess, and oh. you were playing. Um, she's like an Among Us streamer. Yeah. So my son plays this all the time, and from what I can understand, you sneak around a space station with like yeah. ten other people, and yeah. you call each other sus. Yes. <laughs> So I'm confused about this game a little bit because it looks like it has really old graphics yes. from like 1980s. Yes. So I don't know. Explain this to me. It's not right. Number one, uh, Among Us is amazing. And I don't get enough time to play nearly often enough. But if you've not played, uh, it's kind of the, the multiplayer game that's sweeping the world right now where, uh, yes, as you described, uh, there there are 10 of you on a derelict spaceship. Right. Uh, usually there are two imposters okay. going around sabotaging the ship and picking people off one by one. So the other eight people uh, have to figure out who the two imposters are. Right. And if you can do that within a certain time frame, uh, you win. Or, but if everybody gets killed or the ship blows up, um, then you lose. And it, uh, I know that on paper, I guess, you know, it doesn't sound like anything uh, new or right. crazy, but it's it. Um, especially if you're playing with ten people, you know the the backbiting, the backstabbing, and the uh, the accurate the, the 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 both the correct and false accusations uh, flying from amongst your best friends um, are is pretty is pretty amazing. Pretty fun. Yeah, yeah. It, it, I'm sure it's broken up some very good friendships. <laughs> oh no! At the same time, I, I may have uh, I, it may have brought people together as well. So it's cool. So yeah, the people who aren't imposters have to go around the ship and complete tasks. Right. Uh, the other two go around and sabotage at the same time. So. So do you have more fun when you are the imposter or when you aren't? That's a great question. I so when I and I'm still pretty amateur at this game. I'm still not very good. Um, when you know when you're just a regular, I guess member of this this the space crew, it's fun. You're going around trying not to get killed, completing. You know the tasks are very simple. It's like you know go to the navigation and repair the electric electrical panel. Um, go to the medical bay. Right. To scan. Um, but the imposter, uh, you have to go and you're trying to you're trying to off as many people as you can. And sabotage a ship, but the if you get accused, you got to you got to come up with a story. Right. You, you got to convince everybody else that no, that I, no, that's not me. It's ridiculous. You didn't see me just coming out of that room where uh, a body was discovered. And this, this is where I get into trouble. I am a terrible liar. Right. And come, you you got to come up with alibis on the fly. You got and um, it's yeah, the, and there's. There are strategies. Uh, um, you know, you could you could go, you could you could kill somebody, and then you can alert the entire crew that oh my god, I just discovered a body. <laughs> um, you know, in the in 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 the security room. Oh man, I I I think Blue did it, but meanwhile you're the you're the one that did right. It. So you you're can throw. Not, you're ready to throw everybody under the bus at any moment, basically. Right. It's not unlike a real time multi player game of clue i guess in a right. way Except, uh, you know you don't have to find the, you don't have to you don't have to pick the weapon really or you know now what now what do you think about this though these type of games are so popular i'm sure with yeah. your kids too i'm always blown away because there's so many games out now that are incredible that have the, the, the most up-to-date visual effects oh, yeah. ever and these games they want to play like among us or even they go back to like my son wants to play pac-man that looks like 
you know, it's such a difference in the quality of the game. I just, I'm surprised that they still are so attracted to these games that I don't know. Yeah, I think, uh, well, number one, nostalgia is back, my friend. I uh, guess. For anyone who's watched uh, Cobra Kai or mm -hmm. uh, Beverly Hills 90210, I think, is coming back. Uh, I just saw the trailer for the new Saved by the Bell. Oh, man. Update. Um, all this stuff that we loved. Coming that, back. That we thought was, was like, all right, that was cool. That went on for five, six years. That was awesome. But that was, you know, it had its time, right? And then. Yeah. We just kind of move forward. No, they, they bring them back. And all and, and now that we're a little older, we're like, oh, man, I remember Zach Morris. Um, yes. <laughs> I wonder what he's been up to. And then, But then you get to see their kids uh, wreaking havoc. And you see that the apples don't fall that far from the trees. So that's, um, that's uh, yeah, that's cool. And and number two, I, whatever, if, if it was good, then there's no reason it wouldn't be good now. You know, maybe the graphics aren't as great. Right. Uh, but, you know, the... It, even even if you have a if you have a bad game with great graphics, it's still a bad game. So yeah, 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 yeah. So I think these team like ensemble type of games are really popular as well. After you know, like Fall Guys and all the ones where you're kind of either on a team or you're trying to go against other people, I find they're more popular than the like one person games. Yeah, I love the. I just love this. It's not a new advent, but which is um, multiplayer games where multiplayer. You can, be, you can you can be in Canada. I can be here in Jersey. Right. We, we can go. We can go. Uh, go suss out. Uh, <laughs> in Among Us. Exactly. Yeah, we're gonna have to. We're gonna have to get. We're gonna get get some people together and. and uh, oh, that'd so, be fun. Yeah, usually, uh, I mo what, how most people set up, they'll they'll play Among Us, which is um, which is free. Or right. uh, you can play it on an iPad. You can play it on your on your laptop. Right. And then, uh, uh, most people hop on hop on Discord, and so they can talk to each other and yell at each other as well. Right. And it gets it it it's it's it can get heated. It can get <laughs> heated and get very passionate. Um, it's pretty fun. Um, the last time I played was with uh yeah streamer Talia Vest. Definitely check her out. Uh, she's known for being one of the best uh, Magic the Gathering players out there uh also uh, a friend of ours and a uh, uh, former major league baseball player hunter pence oh wow a streamer was playing with us and so hunter got us all together and he was like hey uh let's meet at i think we met at like 6 p.m on a friday and he's like hey let's just play some among us and i was on for i think seven or eight hours oh and my gosh I, I, I didn't intend to play that long but you know, you just keep going and 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 going, and it's just uh, yeah, it reminded me of the old days back in college, or right, you know, when playing like the first uh, playing Warcraft three or Doom or Quake or whatever the, the first play, just starting at night and then leaving the computer lab, and then I was like, oh man, the sun's out. I'm like, oh, <laughs> it's been all night. But yeah. as you know, it makes sense too in this situation with COVID around the world that people would want to, you know, connect this way. And it's a great way to be social without having to actually, you know, interact with people and, you know, transmit any virus. You can do it, uh, you know, electronically. So that's great. Yeah, I love it. Uh, Susan says, not to get too deep, but I find it to be a great critical thinking development tool for kids since they have to cooperate, corroborate, yes. and defend their positions. That's definitely. Uh, yeah, for sure. So you don't have to just run around shooting people in the head. Um, right. Yeah. Or uh or parachuting into you know, onto islands and 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 uh and finding weapons and 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 then shooting people in the head. Oh gosh. I've over Fortnite. Fortnite was like a huge thing in our house for the past, you know, 6 months and I'm glad they're to see them diversifying their gameplay into something yeah. else. <laughs> it's kind of nice. Yeah, although so I'm not I'm not the world's biggest gamer. Like those days of playing all night are gone because I don't right. have enough time now. Oh gosh, no. I, I mean, I believe me, if if I could do that every night and get away with it and not feel guilty about um, shirking all my other tasks in life, right. I would do it in a heartbeat. Uh, I just don't have that time. But that being said, uh, I uh, the PlayStation Five is out, and if yes. anyone out there watching, lucky enough to get one. Good for you. Um, so what, how did you get these? This thing. That's what so I want to know. I think about a month ago, you had a, they released a limited pre-order, so uh, oh. got them that way, and it was released officially. I think either yesterday or the day before, uh, but they were all kind of sold out already. Right. 
except I saw on Twitter, like, hey, Walmart's going to put a bunch on sale at, at noon. I'm like, all right, I'll, I'll give it a shot. Yeah. My intent was to either keep it. And if I got one, I thought it'd be a really good marketing uh, marketing angle for the studio. Right. And I could be like, hey, man, we got a PlayStation 5. Come and, come and stream here or just at least come and play here. Or right. at the very least, like, come and we'll let you look at it. Like, maybe we'll let you touch it. <laughs> Take a picture with it. Yeah, yeah, a selfie. Yeah, yeah, five dollars. You take a selfie with the PlayStation Five. Um, so I hopped on there at noon, and uh, I, I was like, "Oh, there it is! Add to cart!" And then after that, all, all hell kind of broke loose. It didn't. Did you get uh, it? No. Oh. <laughs> because uh, at you know, when at, this is the launch date, like for any any console launch, there's like a crush of like 18 million people yeah. trying to get it at the same time, and of course, the websites are not built to handle this and to truth be told i don't know how many walmart released they probably put 10 of them on there that could be it right literally they were gone in like six seconds and um i mean it's not like i was banking on it i wasn't disappointed but i uh but my favorite part when stuff like this happens and it happens every time Mm -hmm. i go onto twitter and i do a search and i I, you see all the very angry tweets from people yeah i'm gonna get one for my brother uh, what the what the heck, Walmart? Um, your your website stinks. I'm like, well, what did you expect that it was going to be a smooth process? No, it's never been smooth. I was trying to find one too because obviously, you know, when you have a kid in the house, this is what Yum. they want for Christmas. Yeah. So uh, I was getting emails from people because I put it on Twitter saying, who who out there has got one, or what are you hearing in Canada? Because it's a different situation than Yum. than what you guys have. And one person said they were able to get it and they got it as a pre-release from Costco at eight in the morning. And they just happened to be checking their online Costco purchase, I guess, and saw it was available and they had a couple listed, but it was a random thing that it was just there. Yeah. I mean, I'll be honest with you. There's this much demand, which of course there is. Yes. You know, this this is huge. It's a new, you know, it's it's the new generation of polygons and pixels and, and ray traces yes. and and uh frame rates like if i did manage to get one I, of course i would have flipped it for twice as much i well, mean yeah that's yeah i i i and i would have kept the extra money waited a little bit till they became more available and then bought one then so but that's i don't know maybe i've become cold and heartless and no. it was a business but yeah the well, prices are crazy. You can see them, like you said, going for triple what they're probably worth. And uh, when I called a couple of stores here in Canada, they said, well, wait till the end of the month after Black Friday because we're going to get more in and, you know, right. be patient. I think it's all just a marketing strategy to make everyone crazy for oh, it. You, yeah, you, you, know you know the shortage. Yeah, there's a shortage because they haven't released all of them yet. Right. So this is, yeah, they, they're building up uh, They're building up demand. They, they've... They've done this before. Yes, it work. It it's good for marketing. It's good for uh, you know driving up prices. Right. It's just good over. It's good advertising because you know if they sell out quick, what what what's going to happen? All the news outlets are going to be like, oh man, it's sold out. No one can get one. Uh, it's, and that's all anyone's going to talk about. So right. Yeah, it's all a. Uh, it's all conspiracy, everybody. And you know what? We're falling into the trap, man. Because here we are talking about it, creating hype. And people are probably out there right now Googling, how do I get the PlayStation? Because we're talking about it, right? Um, um, you go to eBay or Craigslist or whatever, and then you pay a ton for it. If you need it now, <laughs> patience, my friends, patience. There's, <laughs> there are enough silicon Sony PlayStation 5 chips. And the Xbox, the new Xbox came out apparently too, which didn't hasn't had the same kind of fanfare. No, I haven't heard like how that's doing in comparison. Yeah, but that's how to... Um, yeah. Meanwhile, you know what? I'll uh, yeah, I'll I'll play Pac Man until yes, it comes up. I'm actually a huge uh, Nintendo game girl. I love the Nintendo games. They're more my my jam. Uh, <laughs> yes, I love Nintendo games. So mm-hmm. I'm still obsessed with the Switch. Like I'm, oh part, yeah, you know that's still my go to. But uh, I know like because we have a PS4. All the games, I guess, will be able to play on the PS5 too. So that's what he wants. But you know, most, of them. most, most of them. kids, yeah. Well, even the switches were hard to get. Yes, 
started buying them because we were trapped at home, not not support. We're not able to leave our houses. I heard that that everyone was like, all the electronic devices were going up and up because you know the kids were at home, they were bored, they wanted more things to do, so they're flying off the shelves. Yeah, I you know my main problem with the switch. It's a great. It's it's awesome. It's the 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 evolution of uh, starting with the Nintendo Game and Watch with the little flip up, right? To you know to the Wii and all the other Nintendo consoles before and the DS. Yeah. Uh, yes. You know, had this crazy awesome baby and out spit the 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 the, the um the Nintendo Switch. Mm-hmm. And I love it. And I and I bought one, but I you know my my I pretty much I gave it to my kids. So I I'll. When he's not, when he's on the PlayStation Four, the Xbox One, then I get the Switch back. Um, but I find myself more often than not going, "Hey, has anyone seen the Switch? Mm-hmm. Like it's not small." Yes, but I keep. I I can never find it. Do you have a black? Like, what color are your controllers? Um, they're 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 blue and 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 red. I guess okay. yeah, blue and red. Yeah, but with the with the charcoal ones, yeah, the yes, it, it camouflages itself. I yeah I feel like and maybe they sell them already like we need like a beacon maybe like yeah. a, it just starts to blink and then you can find it I find because of the re- the controllers on ours are different colors I can find it more easily than other things like we have black I don't know just controllers that I can't ever see but um, yeah I just love how portable it is too when we're going for a long ride in the car he can play it in the car or whatever it's so yeah. easy and handy <laughs> so handy. <laughs> Awesome. Um, have you have you played a game called Overcooked before? Are you familiar with Overcooked? No. It's a collaborative cooking game. Oh, that sounds fun, though. Yes. But like Among Us, so you know you have to collaborate to make dishes, and it's very simple. It's like you know one person's got to chop onions. Okay. Got to like boil rice. What are you and, making? What kind of dishes is it? Uh, like- all kinds. So you know you're making like sushi dishes, or um, or you're you're putting together just um uh you know sandwiches you're putting together that that require multiple items okay prepare each of them and kind of put them together serve them then in some stages you have to wash the dishes and and it's a whole thing and then you know the the uh, one you know like one stage is a boat so it keeps rocking back and forth and oh. things and you have to do it within a certain time limit um it's fun but that sounds really great but Again, like Among Us, you're young. I'm, you know, I'll be like, "Yo, Mike, what the hell, man? <laughs> the rice, I, we need rice, Mike. Mike Zapsic, we need rice. What the hell? You, st- you're, you're a chef in real life. You don't know to, you don't, you know. Oh, gosh, I actually haven't played with Mike. I think me and my, I want, I really want to. So I'm like, are you making goulash? Is this like some kind of intense Slovakian dish you're cooking up? Because that could be interesting. It's usually like three items. Oh, so, like chopping onions and then like chopping up fish and then. Uh, usually it involves cooking something, so there's right. in a stove involved. But I I want to play with Mike because Mike used to be a chef, so he's That's great. he did it for real, and he's also very bad at video games, oh. and he also gets very frustrated very quickly. <laughs> <laughs> if we stream this, I think this could be like a huge hit. It could be. I think you have a good winner there uh, yeah. to create something, some drama. Yeah, I think something like that could make the first page of Twitch. Like we yeah. could. Be, we, we yeah we, we we could be rolling in it we could be like the next ninja or something but oh wow but I, yeah i'm working on that i'm working on that then i think i i think i would give him like the little the little switch controller so even <laughs> harder so if, yeah i could see him like getting beat red though i could see him throwing the controller oh no he's yes he, he's got a you know, mike very great very nice guy one of the nicest guy i know but he's got an anger problem and it's- uh and I think if you combine that with gaming, I think, uh, yeah, I think, we, I think we might be onto something. It could be that that level of taking it to a new extreme, like cooking show, like yeah. you know, like Hell's Kitchen, where he's screaming and yelling and everything, but everyone's entertained and having fun. Yeah, I gotta check. I think we can do online multiplayer, so oh, I think cool. we should. And um, if that's the case, then I think we should figure out a way to we could stream this. So yeah, we work on this. Let me, I'll put that on the ever-growing list of things that we both have to do. Yes. <laughs> Cooking show extreme. I love it. Yeah, for sure. Um, I um, I also want to give a, a shout-out to uh, to Stan Lee. He uh, passed away mm-hmm. two years ago yesterday. Oh. And, um, did you ever get to be in his presence? I felt really, really sad. It was one of the things I was most looking forward to. And I went to a con at uh, Fan Expo in Toronto, and he yeah. was coming out with his like 
handlers and he was getting into a car. So I saw him and I got to say, hi, Stan, but he was walking by and getting into the car. I didn't have any alone time with him or anything, but you know, you could tell even then he was really kind of slowing down from what I imagined him to be, you know, right. his, his aura, his presence was so large and it's, it was pretty, yeah, it was pretty huge that even when he was walking into a car. And People were, were screaming. I know. And I'm one of them. I'm like, ah. <laughs> what about you? How you, I'm sure you've had many interactions. Uh, I mean, I, I've been, I've been very fortunate. He, he was on comic book men twice. So wow. that was, and, and I think I really treasure those moments because uh, even if you saw him at a convention, you most people had to wait three hours in line to see him. Right. And maybe even if you did, you know, you got up, you got an autograph or a photo, it would, the interaction would have lasted maybe a minute. If right. You um, usually they would, they would have went even more. If it, if it was you, it would have gone two minutes. He liked <laughs> I heard that. Like, he's very respectful, like very flirtatious though. Like in a, in um in in kind of like um like I always saw him was like oh man if I ever get to be ninety like I that's what I want to be where you can flirt with like thousands of women and get what get away with it and because they like like oh Stan and they like it yes or, yeah um that's uh, I always thought that was funny um but yeah usually kind of got maybe a couple minutes with him where he came out and we got to spend like you know two three four hours with him just wow. shoot comic book men and you know it was a much smaller crowd and so yeah we actually got to kind of we actually got to talk to him you're like best friends with stan lee you're living the dream i don't know about that i would <laughs> and then i would see him at a lot of convent maybe three or four times per year after we after that right conventions and um and i'd like to think like he maybe remembered me half the time that i <laughs> <laughs> Then, which I don't, you know, I didn't care. He's, a, he's an old guy who meets a ton of people. So, right. But he was very he, he always. I think that the thing that struck me was one, he like nicest guy in ever to ever exist, definitely. Right. And two, just how much he he really loved his fans and how gracious he was to him. It was really, it's really kind of like uh, you know we meet people. So I, it's like I know I'm not Stanley, but I'm like, hey, I hope I I even get like a tenth of. You walk away with a, what a tenth of what I walked away with when I, when I met him. And, I think that all your fans feel that definitely. I've seen people run up to you, and you are unbelievably gracious, <laughs> welcoming. You know. Yes. Speaking of welcoming, uh, we have a. Oh, uh, here we go. Hey, what's up, guys? Matt, Hi. Matt, heavy metal, everybody. What's up, my friend? What's up, guys? Here. How you doing? Good. Nice. Nice to meet you, Ming. Blake, always a pleasure. Yes. Matt, thank you for jumping on with us. This was uh this is awesome. I love the shirt. Thank you. I thought I thought I'd be in character for today. Amazing. Uh, <laughs> and I, I, I appreciate the uh the katanas in your background. Um yeah, so the bottom three are Star Wars lightsabers. Um the one above that is the Michonne katana, and the one above that is the one from Kill Bill. So Wow. And then and then we match with uh, my tattoo and your your wall. I love it. That's awesome. <laughs> I love it. Wow. I, yeah. How how are you and where are you right now? Uh, I'm good. You know, uh, without taking political sides, I'm just happy that uh, uh, <laughs> Biden just got called for Georgia, so that at least this can be behind us. So regardless right. of who you vote for, I'm going to stay agnostic. I just want it to be over. <laughs> rather mm -hmm. than dragged out so the, the quicker they tally these votes and the quicker we can move on the better uh and i am in uh marina del rey california ah that is awesome um i used to i was a former resident many 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 years ago um mm -hmm. i lived off the uh for anybody who's in southern california i lived off the 90 freeway and uh there's a blake there's a place there and i i i, I imagine it's still there uh, the, it's it's a local chain uh, called Jerry's Famous Deli, which is twenty four seven, and saved me many a time at four o'clock in the morning. And where they, where in the marina did you live? Um, I I lived uh, I it, it was technically Marina Del Rey. It's closer to Culver City though. I was right off of Culver Boulevard, uh, kind of by the Loyola Marymount area. But um, I would go and get chicken matzo ball soup constantly. I love it. <laughs> it's so great. So you're in a you're in a good space, my friend. 
I, yeah, I, I love it over. I've been here for two years. We just signed uh, me and my now fiance. We uh, we got engaged last week. Thank you. Um, we just signed, uh, re-upped our lease, so we'll be here for a couple more years. Great. Okay. <laughs> Where whereabouts are you? I am in uh, I'm in New Jersey, uh, near oh, a cool. Red Bank. It's uh, basically this area is known as uh, like Kevin Smith Land. So uh, he shot he probably based he based all pretty much all his movies up in this area. That's um, so cool. Yeah, uh, um, my uh, Alexis is from uh, Philadelphia, but outside in uh, um, uh, uh, Hun <laughs> in Yardley, Yardley. Oh, yeah, yeah. which is I think relatively close to the New Jersey border. Yeah, it's not that far. That's uh, that's that's amazing. Very cool. I'm way up here in Toronto, so I'm I guess the furthest north. <laughs> you are, but, but I do love Toronto. Amazing. Toronto. It's a beautiful city. Yes, we're just getting into the cooler weather now, though. They're saying we might get snow this week, so we're getting ready for that. Does it snow a lot in Toronto? It does. It does. Yes. Yes, that's a hard no for me. I mean, even even <laughs> I grew I grew hard up no. in uh, in New York City, and oh. I've dealt with a lot of snow right. and a lot of black snow day after it snows <laughs> from yes. the pollution of the city. And exactly. I I needed to get far away from that. <laughs> yes, I've heard a lot of people say that once they leave kind of the cold, they're just done with it. They want sunshine for the in palm trees forever, right? <laughs> Which I totally understand. Yeah, you're you're. You're in a good spot, especially uh, to create. Um, I don't know if you ever go outside and work, or um, uh, there's the uh, there's some there's there's good coffee places where I like to work. Uh, but, I mean, obviously, right now because of COVID, uh, I don't go to coffee shops. But pre-COVID, I, I definitely work from coffee shops two, three days a week because the the, the vibe is just so so great over there. Uh, a lot of stuff on Main Street in uh, you know the Venice Santa Monica, um, you know area there's like a bulletproof coffee that has an outdoor seating that's just a great vibe and yeah i, I uh, the, did you ever go to coffee commission commissary uh coffee commissary yes commissary yeah yeah yeah, oh, yeah for sure and uh, i would hang out there and uh, there's a there's a blake there's a combination motorcycle shop surf shop coffee place called uh, Deus, uh Deus Ex Machinum. wow uh, lifestyle a very big lifestyle yeah. brand i lived i lived walking distance from there for years uh when i was i was in venice right before marina del rey and we we used to go uh to deuce all the time i mean their their uh, um, uh cappuccinos are incredible but their aesthetics are are, are such a vibe to work yeah, at. very inspirational and then uh i would go and take a walk in venice and i would uh um i would always see uh the actor tim robbins riding a bicycle <laughs> around constantly. in your head or in reality, no, yeah. in reality it was him it was him, and then uh, one one day I was walking down. I, I see a very gorgeous, tall, uh, dark haired woman walking her kid, and it was Gal Gadot. I was like, "Oh, okay, that's that's wow, that's you know, Wonder Woman probably walking down the street uh, of Abbey Kinney Boulevard in Venice." So you know, just just a just a heads up. So wow. we, saw, uh, we saw Hillary Swank uh, last week uh, in the area, uh, just like chilling at this uh, this uh, smoothie spot called. Um, uh, uh, juicy, juicy ladies, fantastic, wow. name. fantastic <laughs> name. Um, and it, it's all like organic, um, you know, creme de la creme, uh, smoothies and, and shakes and health food and just delicious. Yeah. I think you just reminded me, I think all the superheroes just hang out at coffee shops in LA. I just, I just got a memory of, uh, being at a coffee shop on Fairfax and I was like, Oh, there's Fonka Jensen. I was like, Jean Grey hangs out at this coffee shop with her dog. This is Pretty That's cool. Awesome. That, that, can, that should be a new Instagram channel. Uh, superheroes and coffee shops. Yes. Yeah. yeah the yes. only word I could get out of my mouth was like, "Hey, you're, yeah, wow, that's a cool dog," and that was it. That's all <laughs> that, hey. And it was, it was. She had a cool dog, but out of the millions of things I could have said to impress her, I don't think that was it. So. Oh. <laughs> she can remember though, like that you asked her about her dog and not about her superpowers. Yeah. For sure. So, how are things going over at Heavy Metal? Things are great. It's great. Um, you know the magazine is monthly again, which is uh, which is really exciting. And uh, Blake has uh, lent lent her talents uh, to the magazine uh, in the form of Synapse, which is in three hundred. Uh, 
I have it actually. Yes. I well, always I, have this. How did you get a copy? They're sold out, right? I know. Yeah. I had to I had to pre-order it actually. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, 300 sold out. Uh, there's still a few online at heavymetal.com, but I don't think they're really in stores anymore. 301 uh, just hit shelves this week or last week, um, which is great. has some amazing stories in it. And then next month is 303, and we start um, George Romero's The Rise, uh, which is yeah, okay, amazing. Yeah. And we start uh, Bart and Michelle Sears' uh, Maiden, uh, which I'm so excited for. Um, for everyone listening, I'm sure you know who Bart Sears is. So him and his wife uh, wrote this concept called Maiden, which is a horror story. And the art that Bart has dr drawn for it is unlike anything he did for Justice League, G.I. Joe, or any of his other projects. It is edgy. Wow. It is it is dark. And and, and uh, Michelle, who wrote a lot of it, it, it's it's really compelling. I'm I'm excited about that 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 story. Yeah, I mean, I think you just mentioned, uh, you know, the things I, I, I think of uh, that wh when I hear heavy metal mag uh, uh, magazine is dark, edgy, uh, fancy, sci-fi, things that I think a lot of creators don't usually get to do in you know, maybe right. mainstream companies or um, and then with heavy metal, they get a wider audience. So, you know, they could channel into, of course, their individual or uh, independent projects. But uh, but yeah, have you, I, you, you guys give them a great, a pretty great platform. We uh, I, I, when I when I took over heavy metal about a year ago now. Yeah, it's November. Right? I don't even know what month it is anymore because of COVID. Um, but it's been about a year now, and something that was important to me when when I took over was making sure that the magazine was not only servicing sci-fi, fantasy, and horror, but was a place where like great creators, new creators um, could could try stuff, right? I, I'm a big believer of trying crazy ideas. Some of them will fail, some of them will be okay, and some of them will be great. <laughs> but, you know, the medium of storytelling is about pushing the boundaries of, you know, social, political norms, of things that make you comfortable, uncomfortable, and when things are too blah, mm -hmm. then culture doesn't get pushed forward. And, you know, that was something that heavy metal really did in the 80s was pushing culture forward and really making people think differently than what they did and how they did. So that, that's been a, uh, a mantra is that if a creator comes here and has a crazy idea and that idea might not fly other places, I want them to double down on it. I want more of the crazy. I love that about you. And that's one of the things that really attracted me to working with you know, Matt right away has this incredible energy, so much energy, enthusiasm that just, you know, makes me so excited to work on any project they bring to me. And uh, I was thrilled to be a part of it. And I really want to talk today, too, about your book, which just yeah. launched because it's amazing. And I was lucky enough to get a preview copy and read it. Oh, my gosh. Beyond Kuiper. It's out. So please tell us a little bit about um, Beyond Kuiper. Uh thanks for the uh the great intro on that um yeah i mean beyond kuiper is is, is, is is effectively it's my love letter to science fiction um growing up uh i've always loved um and i always tell this story because i think it's really important i always loved in the original star trek with gene rottenberry and um and, and kirk and spock and everyone and you had this episode where Kirk went to mediate this conflict between the left, white, right, black face people and the left, black, right, white face people. And the whole thing was a motif as to racism in America. And this came out in the 60s and it affected so many people in a positive way because it used the device of science fiction to let you be a step away from it and look at the divisiveness that this can cause without you thinking it being you. And that sort of ability to, sh to, to create a lens for people to comprehend maybe the injustices of everyday life through entertainment always made me feel like entertainment was more than entertainment. It made me feel like it is something that could actually change minds, which I always found fascinating. So when John and I started writing Beyond Kuiper, 
in 2015, which is crazy. Wow. Um, you know, we we really worked on the concept of we're creating a world like Token, Tolkien, we're creating a world like Rowling, and we're creating a world like Lucas and Rottenberry. So for the first three years, we didn't write a single page of the book. We wrote backstory, and we wrote periodic tables, and we wrote units of measure conversions, and, and Blake has seen them. And, you know, in the book, they're on the, you know, they're in the first few pages, but you can see, you know, we, we converted everything to the galactic standard from human metric. And we, we created this whole universe so that when we did write the story, it felt real. It felt like when you're in it, the ideals and situations could be your own, but in this alternative universe. And, you know, there's a heavy political, you know, side to it. You know, the, there, there was a third world war in the 2050s and it created a world government called the World Council. And now in 2091, where the book takes place, it's a different paradigm of society. And it uses the ability that we're just far enough away that it doesn't feel like us, but mm -hmm. it's what would happen if we do not fix things within our society. And to me, it's, it's just been amazing. And John, who's my co-author on it and one of my best friends in life, is an aerospace engineer at Lockheed Martin. And, um, you know, the science in the book is as real as it can be. I mean, the reason we chose 2091 is because something happens in the second book, which comes out, you know, next year, where the planets had to be in a certain alignment. I'm just, I'm trying to think of how to say this without creating any spoilers. Right. Okay. <laughs> Planets have to be in a certain alignment. So John actually used the math and and, and and plotted where the planets would be in 2091. And we picked the exact month that the book started based on planetary alignments that are, are factual. Wow. So that's like the level of detail in the science side of the book. Yes. Um, and, uh, you know, what was, you know, just to wrap that up, Screen Rant did a review of the book and said that the uh, the science and engineering of our spaceship is the most realistic science ever used in a spacefaring vessel in fiction. And that was pretty rewarding because that was what we were hoping for. If nothing else, we wanted the scientists <laughs> to say, this is tight. You could tell it is too, like from reading the book, it, there's so much detail. It feels very authentic and it's just incredible. I was actually going to ask you about, you know, John, uh, his background and everything. So that's awesome that you already answered that. Um, so one more question I really have to know is that in the first line of your book, in the description, it mentions the Drake equation, which is super interesting to me. I don't know a lot about it, but I was hoping maybe you could just explain a little bit about uh, how it plays into the book. So the Drake equation, and I'll look at the exact um, sort of definition just so that we can mm -hmm. be as, um, as uh, uh, factual as I can. So the, 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 the Drake equation basically states that there can't be life in the universe because the amount of planets there are and the amount of potential uh, life on those potential planets and then how many could potentially be talking to us and then why haven't they? So right. Drake equation basically states that math and probability states that there can't be other life because if there is, they would have found us. But yeah. I'm a big disbeliever of that because uh, there's an amazing series uh, that's no longer uh, live called Through the Wormhole, um, narrated by Morgan Friedman. Incredible. <laughs> Highly recommend. Um, I love and it. in one of the episodes, I don't know, season five, there's like nine seasons of it, they talk about this exact thing. And they talk about the reality of what would need what it would be like to find another civilization with life and 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 using the idea that there are plenty of civilizations out there that have life that have a uh, smart life the universe is so vast that it would be like standing 50 uh, it'd be like standing 50 yards away from a conveyor belt moving at 50 miles an hour with three buckets on it and you try to throw a football into one of those buckets. That wow. is how difficult it would be to find the other sentient life, even if there was some, just because of the distances that, that it covers. I mean, 
it right. would take at our current at our current technology 40 years to get to the edge of our solar system let alone into another solar system so john and i both think that drake equation is inaccurate and in the story it's more likely that the universe sentient that there's more intelligent species than us and mm -hmm. they know we're here and they just don't think that we're worthy for their time right. and that's the concept of the book so it's called beyond kuiper because the kuiper belt is the ring of asteroids that encompasses our solar system it's the remnants of the rocks that created our solar system and beyond kuiper is obviously the rest of the galaxy right but in the story the kuiper belt is actually called a sea of rocks and the sea of rocks is the military installation used by the galactic star alliance to quarantine species that are too hostile to interact with the rest of the galaxy so we are quarantined within our own solar system and the story starts with our human scientist bernard william hubert and a catastrophe at the super collider in geneva called cern and at the same time the galactic star alliance is tracking this a catastrophe because any planet that is quarantined, they track the evolution of science on those planets to make sure that there's nothing for them to be concerned about. And an antimatter explosion like the one that happens at CERN would be cause for concern. Right. So the Galactic Star Alliance has terrorist organizations as well within it. And some of those organizations believe that quarantining species is the wrong thing to do. When you have a civilization with 600,000 sentient planets like we do in the GSA, if a planet has a species that is too hostile, some of these factions think it's just better to eradicate the species than to have this potential issue with the rest of the galaxy. So our story intertwines as the GSA is fighting off some of these terrorist organizations that are looking for solar systems like Earth to judge and to make a decision whether or not the people have the ability to be better and to eventually become part of the alliance or if they should be eradicated and to create space for other civilizations to evolve and grow that could be compatible with this galactic star alliance wow well, what a fantastic read. I suggest everybody check it out for sure. It has incredible artwork as well, and it is very detailed. So anybody who is into, you know, super deep, uh, you know, sci-fi and you're really wanting an interesting story, this is a great book. So everyone should check it out. Yeah, art by uh, Utku Osden. I think I got that name right. Yeah. You, I wasn't going to try. Way better than I can, Ming. I, I just call him UT, honestly. <laughs> And yeah. uh, you know, if, if you had to, you know, say sci-fi, there's a trailer for the book that you can mm -hmm. check out. Uh, it's probably, yeah, yeah. I imagine. And uh, so am I reading this right? Is this a plan for a 10 book series? Yes. So it's a 10 book series. Um, wow. It's honestly, you know, 30 books, right? 10 books in the main story arc. Then we've identified a prequel and a sequel and then some other books that I call like world building books, like how Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find It was actually a book with inside the Harry Potter yep, universe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. So like we have a few books like that that we're um, outlining and putting out. And um, and also on top of all the books, the audio book that we did in partnership with Podium Audio is fully sound designed. I wrote a 22 track record with uh, my buddy Kyle, who also voice acted. Um, so the, the audio book is immersive. It's basically a 14 hour audio movie. So it's fully sound designed, fully scored, uh, voice acted uh, with Kyle doing the majority of the voices. And we have George Romero doing a voice. We have Dylan Sprouse doing a voice. Um, the audio experience pretty wild. It's incredible. That's, that's awesome. It sounds like you, you know, you kind of taking resources from, uh, you know, your, your world, if you will. It's like, Hey man, like you want to do, a, you, you know, you, you want to do a voice on this. And, uh, and all of a sudden you've built this whole big thing. That's yeah. And I, I, I started a record label before, uh, I was in comics. So music has always been part of my DNA. I used to produce concerts across the planet, um, uh, doing the pyrotechnics and the special effects and the stage design, and all that fun stuff. So being able to pull music into it was really exciting also. 
Yeah, and I, I, I love that there's a guide in the beginning of the book. You've converted all the units. I'm like, wow. The thing, the first thing that popped in my head is like, man, when's the role playing game coming out? Like, <laughs> yeah. I, I've had a lot of people uh, compare the depth of um, research and, and materials to like Warhammer, um, yeah. which was which was really cool. But yeah, I mean, I'd love to explore some of those uh, ideas in terms of role playing games and in terms of just just the Beyond Kuiper universe. I mean, we even have you know the planets. Uh, if you get the book, and uh, there's maps of not just earth and where earth is now but of the planets inside the the gsa and the founding sector home worlds and their relative size mass and radius and composition towards earth so that you can understand how differ from our planet and the you know i mean the lore you know we 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 did our best to answer the a, a lore question for every little thing that happened you know as as you saw with my tattoos I'm a pretty big nerd myself, and I always have so many issues with continuities and with backstory and with things that I read. So I was like, screw that. I'm going to take as much time as humanly possible to ensure that any of the questions that I would have asked as a, as a reader, we had an answer for. Right. And that's about five years. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well worth the wait, though, because it's a wonderful story. I really enjoyed it. Yeah, and I mean, one thing us geeks love to do is question and poke holes in things. And uh, it sounds like you've shored up any hole that any geek could could try to poke. We, we, so, we did our best. Uh, hopefully, hopefully, readers uh, agree with that. But I'm sure there are uh, things that we've not thought about that that somebody else has. Uh, that, I mean, that just points out a passionate fan. Then uh, exactly, exactly. Um, but yeah, no, it was it was cool to see how. Also, John, like, kind of converted everything from a science point of view because, it, so as I said, he's a scientist. He's designed, you know, numerous satellites that are now orbiting the planet, which is pretty wild. And, you know, I would say something along the lines of, why don't we have a neutron star core of a planet? And then, you know, he would have a mental breakdown because <laughs> that, like, in no way, shape, or form physically possible. Right. Like, like a teaspoon of a neutron star is heavier than our sun and earth combined. Um, so you just could not have that. But I was like, but a neutron star would make really cool metal. And he was like, it would, but that is fiction and not like hi-fi. So he went and read about a dozen papers on compositions of stars and came back to me and said, all right, so this is super theoretical, but in theory, we could take a white dwarf star and have a quantum time machine create, um, um, push it forward in its life to the end of its life, which would create a black dwarf, which is theoretically a possible type of star. However, in science, it would take the entirety of the life of the universe to get to a black dwarf or the star to burn enough of its fuel to get to that point. So we just speed up to that point, and then we use a piece of the black dwarf as part of the rocky composition, and that would work. And that's how we created clay and steel, which is you know our vibranium. And clay and steel is the toughest metal in the galaxy right. that was created from the core of this planet called Kalea and mined off of their moon and all that fun stuff. That's incredible. I, uh, Susan Shop comes as before I order from Amazon. I'm gonna have to see if I can order from my local shop uh, called The Adventure Begins. This sounds amazing. So, uh, thank you, Susan. You've sold one there. Uh, I see the book comes out in 11 days on November 24th. So the the, the printed book in uh, bookstores and Amazon comes out November 24th. Okay. The ebook and the audio experience are live on Audible right now oh, and okay. Kindle. Um, they came out on Tuesday. Uh, it was really exciting. Audible has been an incredible partner. Um, we, we're on the main page under new releases on audible.com. Nice. Like four titles to the right of J.K. Rowling's new book, which, you know, <laughs> honestly, that alone made my life. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Matter, Harry Potter is the uh, is what got me to read. You know, I'm I'm 32. And, you know, as a kid, I was. I believe I was nine when the first book came out, maybe 10, but 
all the books came out in June and they all came out on, I believe it was either, I think back then it wasn't Tuesdays. I think it was Thursdays or Fridays, but it typically came out on the 21st or within plus or minus a day of that, depending on the year. My birthday is June 21st. So every year I would go to the bookstore at midnight on my birthday to pick up <laughs> the new Harry Potter book. And it was like the best thing ever as a kid. And those stories to me were just so much fun. Like I've never read a book where I saw the movie in my head mm -hmm. the way that I did with reading those books, right? Even, even Lord of the Rings, you don't, you know, those books are of a different level of reader. You need to mm -hmm. like really understand the English language right. to, to read those, you know, right. Harry Potter had the, you know, ability to be pretty advanced read, but really smooth and really easy to understand what's happening. And that just was, and I think, you know, Beyond Kuiper is, is written in a very similar cadence where there's a lot of hi-fi concepts, but it's a really, really easy read. And that, yes. that, yeah, that was all, you know, inspired by how Rowling, you know, painted this incredible world that, you know, Jim Dale brought to life in the audiobooks. If anyone's not listened to the audiobooks of Harry Potter, those are the movies to me. Go turn on the Jim Dale audiobooks, close your eyes, lay down on the couch, and you will see the movie that you hoped to have seen right. in theaters. Amazing. Wow. Um, and so... So yeah, so all those things came together. And then also, I mean, not to deviate from Beyond Kuiper, but my my comic book, uh, Darkwing, also came out this right. week. And you know, there, there's some really exciting stuff happening with Darkwing that is honestly 1,000% because of Blake. 100% because of Blake. Well done. And we'll announce it probably, I think we're announcing it in January. So uh, I'll come back on and we'll talk about it then. Yeah. But, uh, Blake made some introductions and did some matchmaking that really turned out to be ideal for what the future of Darkwing holds. Amazing. I, uh, Bl Blake, uh, she she inspires a lot of things. Oh, you guys are <laughs> making me blush. <laughs> it's got to be all the Timbits. It's got. It's oh, the Timbits! I know. I love it. The donuts. <laughs> uh, so, you know, hop on to Amazon, hop on to Audible, hop on to Goodreads, go to your local bookshop, pick pick up uh, Beyond Kuiper. Yes. Start the adventure because there many there's many there's much more to come. And yeah, uh, yeah get immersed in the in uh, in Matt and in, in, in Matt's world for sure. That's amazing. Thanks, man. Awesome. Well, thank you guys for uh, for having me on. And I mean, I can't, I just looked at my, my clock and I realized we've been talking for 30 minutes and that was the yeah. quickest 30 minutes. Oh, yes. ever. it went so fast. And, uh, I know. Yeah, no, we need to, we need to do this more often and, and we should have, you know, um, uh, for everyone listening, that's a fan of Blake's that maybe haven't read Synapse yet and can't get a hold of issue 300, just go to your podcasting store wherever you listen to podcasts and look for heavy metals, wonder work and episode seven of season one is uh, our audio version of synapse that Blake wrote that we awesome. had um, this amazing voice actress, Raquel um, voice, our main character. And it, um, I think it is incredible. I know Blake loves it too, but if, if, if you like, <laughs> audio journeys it is it is an amazing amazing episode awesome well thank you so much for coming on and telling us about your book it's so incredible and i know as an, a writer and an author having your book be in a bookstore i saw your face on your your picture you posted on uh instagram and you're just beaming so happy so i'm really thank thrilled you. for you guys yeah seeing it in the bookstore is pretty surreal it is right? that, that, that is that is a pretty wild uh thing to have happen so that yeah. was that was pretty cool um and yeah i'm just i'm excited you know to keep it going but you know more so than than my stories i'm 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 just so happy that i'm in a position that i can like lift up other stories right yeah. i love you know i i live in a science fiction world yeah. and the fact that all day every day i can just talk about motivations of characters and how they relate to a plot i mean Fun. I'm, yeah, that's just the that, that's the dream. That's the dream. Awesome. That's amazing. Thank you. Thank you so much. Awesome. Uh, 
<laughs> all right. Well, we're going to have to have Matt back on uh, oh, yeah. in a little bit to go over sure. all the other projects coming up. Yes. Well, thanks guys so much for having me on. Uh, if you want to follow me, I'm at Matt Matthew Medney on all socials, uh, yes. Twitter, Instagram, rarely on Facebook. So use the other two. And if you want to learn more about Beyond Kuiper before buying it, you can go to the bku.com. And uh, there's a whole website there that has, you know, quotes from people who have read it, like Blake, to understanding of the world and planets and all this fun stuff. And you can start immersing yourself in the world there until you uh, find a copy at a bookstore or get the audio. Awesome. Perfect. Cool. Now everybody knows where to go. Yeah, totally. Thank, thank you so much. And um, yeah, thank you everybody awesome. for, for watching and listening. Um, we appreciate it. So, we do. Uh, <laughs> it's so Thanks, great guys. chatting with you guys. Thanks, guys. Yeah, you too. And uh, bringing border, uh, dissolving borders. That's right. People together. <laughs> I love yeah, that. Is, that is the that is the idea. Borders and and divisiveness is 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 uh, strange. Everyone, oh, yeah. everyone's no. a human. Yeah, that's so 2020, man. I yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So, so uh, yeah, thanks everyone. Pick, go pick up heavy metal and uh, pick up Young Kuiper for sure. So, um, and I guess we'll see you all later. I guess. See you uh, next time. That's right. Bye guys. Okay. Bye guys. <laughs>